Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe how microorganisms and plants can be sources of medicines, and explain why this means that we need to preserve biodiversity. You should then be able to explain what's meant by personalised medicine and synthetic biology, and this is for the OCR specification. Now, thousands of different medicines are commonly used to treat diseases in humans. A good example are antibiotics, which we looked at in a previous video. Antibiotics are chemicals used to treat diseases caused by bacteria. Although antibiotics are toxic to bacteria, they're relatively harmless to human cells. Now, the first commonly used antibiotic was penicillin, which came into use in the 1940s. Penicillin was discovered by the scientist Alexander Fleming. Fleming was culturing bacteria, and one day he found that one of his bacterial plates was contaminated with a fungus. Fleming noticed that the bacteria near the fungus had been killed. This was because the fungus had produced a chemical which was toxic to bacteria, and scientists called this chemical penicillin. Over time, penicillin was produced in large quantities and used to treat bacterial diseases in humans. Now, over the years, scientists have chemically modified penicillin to improve its effectiveness, so now we have a whole range of antibiotics based on penicillin. So as we've seen, penicillin was discovered in a fungus. Here's another antibiotic, this is called doxycycline. Doxycycline is a modified form of an antibiotic that was first discovered in a species of bacteria. And in fact, many of the medicines in use today were discovered in living organisms. The painkiller aspirin was discovered in willow trees, whereas the heart medication digoxin was discovered in foxgloves. So plants and microorganisms are an important source of medicine. Now, the habitats for many of these organisms are being destroyed, for example, the tropical rainforests. This could lead to the loss of many undiscovered potential medicines. So it's very important that we work hard to preserve biodiversity. Now, one important new area of research is in personalised medicine. Every person responds slightly differently to treatment with medical drugs, and this can often be due to a person's genetics. Scientists call the study of this pharmacogenomics. For example, some people have alleles which cause their body to break down drugs more rapidly than other people, and this can affect the optimum dosage of a drug needed to treat a patient. In the future, it's possible that a patient's genome will be analysed before they're treated, and that way allele variations can be determined, and the best drug treatment decided. The way that we produce drugs is also changing. For example, bacteria and other organisms can be genetically engineered to synthesise large quantities of drug molecules, and scientists call this synthetic biology. In the future, we'll be able to design drugs to precisely fit into target molecules, for example the enzymes or receptor proteins found in cancer cells. Okay, so hopefully now you can describe possible sources of medicines.